Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about overfitting and underfitting of a neural network when we have trained it. In the last video, we, we went over like we trained a neural network and we created it from uh, from the bottom with carrots and then we uh, trained it on some data. And in this video here, we're going to talk about overfitting and underfitting, which I mentioned uh, in one of the previous videos. So we're going to talk about what it is and like how, what 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 can cause overfitting and underfitting when we're training our neural network. And then we're going to see how we can reduce overfitting and underfitting in the neural network. So first of all, we're going to have this short recap here from the last video. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure to go watch that where we created our own neural network and then we trained uh, a neural network on, on some vaccine trial data and tried to make some predictions uh, with the trained neural network that we did. So remember to, to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification and like the video if you like the content. and and you want more in the future because it just really helped me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way that you're giving me uh, the support and watching these videos. So in the last video, as I said, we're, we created this model here where we have this sequential model here, which is the neural network uh, with these two hidden layers and an input layer and an output layer. And then we trained the neural network on some vaccine trial data and then we can see like uh, the training output here for the epochs where uh, the loss and the accuracy is going up and down for a neural network. So it trains on that data. And then we made some predictions with the trained neural networks um, with vaccine trial data if the patient had side effects or no side effects. So that was a really cool and nice neural network that we did and, ma and made predictions on the, on the trained neural network. So in this video here, we're going to talk about overfitting and unfitting. And first of all, I want to give you an overview over uh, what it is. And I have this graph here or like this uh, figure here to like show you uh, what overfitting and unfitting is when we're talking about like a trained neural network. So we have this error up here. So our error, we want to decrease our error when we're training a neural network. Um, so we can see that these two errors or like these two um, two lines of graphs here is going down. And then we have the model parameters down here. So we want to find like uh, the model parameters which, which has like which has like the best loss rate or like the error rate. So we don't have error when we're doing new predictions with our with our neural network. So first of all, here we can see that these two graphs here, they're following a pretty good along here um, where we have in this underfitting area. So first of all, here when we, when we haven't trained our neural network that much and we have these uh, model parameters here, then we can see that our model is underfitting. So we can't do predictions on new data because we are, our, our neural network is not able to like generalize and do new predictions on what we wanted it to. So that could be caused by some different kind of things like not, not enough uh, complexity in our neural network or not enough training data that it can learn from. So we're going to talk about that more in depth here in this video here as well. So we can see that these two graphs here, they're following pretty good along and then we have these model parameters. So at one point, the, the model parameters here, we can find like the, the optimal model parameters for this neural ne network here when it's training. And then we can stop uh, when we hit this, these model parameters here with a neural network because when, when we hit these model parameters here, we can see that our validation error starts to go up and we, and we start to go up in this overfitting uh, area here. And the, 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 like the objective of training a neural network is to get the loss uh, towards zero or like convert towards zero or like at least close to zero. It's because we don't, we don't want errors when we're trying to do new predictions with the new neural network on data that our neural network hasn't seen before. So we can see here, like if we train it too much or like our model is going to overfit, we can see that the validation error here, it goes up and it, it just goes further away from the training error. So the objective here is that we have a, a training error here that can be pretty good. But if our validation error is not a good and, a, a, and, and far away from the training error, then our neural network is overfitting, which means that we have overfit uh, our neural network to the data that we have trained it on and it is not able to uh, do predictions on data that it hasn't seen before because we like we can't validate our model and we will get a high error when we're trying to to, to do new predictions on data that it hasn't seen before but we can do fine predictions with the, with the with the like the data that it has trained on but our model has just overfit and uh, so we can't like we can't like generalize um generalize our model so we can do new predictions on new data so this is very uh, very um, important features and very very important things in neural networks when we're training and some of the most important ones is overfitting and underfitting and these these are like very uh, things in, like very important things to to keep track on and like know what happens when you're training a neural network and also how to how to reduce overfitting and underfitting because these are the most uh, like common errors when you're training a neural network so first of all, here we're going to see like what is really like overfitting and underfitting the data in a neural network. 
So we can see over here if we if our data like if our model is underfitting here, we can see that we have a predicted variable here, and then the out, up here on the y-axis we have the output variable that we're going to predict with a neural network. And we can see that if we have an, an, a model here that is underfitting, then we're not really good. Like we can't really like predict the new data because our model is not in, uh, complex enough, so we can't really predict what we wanted it to. And we can see here that we have this optimal here. So here we just have like a straight line here, like uh, linear regression, for example. And we can see that we have these different kind of predictions here, and they're really far away um, from like um, from like uh, a model or like our regression line here. But the more optimal one here would be like um, where we have this like kind of regression here that goes through all the points and is pretty close to it. And we can still generalize our data and and we're not overfitting on the data. We can see that we still get get some deviation from uh, from like the optimal or like our from our regression line um, on this neural network here. And then over here to the right we have this overfitting scenario where our, our model is just overfitting so much to the overfitting so much to the data that we're training on that is not able to predict. Um, to predict a new data that it hasn't seen before. So we can see that we get this very, very complex uh, output and this overfit here of the data. So we can see that it's try it tries to fit to all the data points instead of making making it generalize a bit where we can see this optimal sol solution here. Like we can predict new data variables. Like we can see that if we do new predictions here, like we will get new points down here where up on this graph here, if we did new predictions, like we will get uh, values up here where we wanted to get them down here. So we have this optimal solution here um, where we're not underfitting, we're not overfitting, and we're, we, we can have new data and predict uh, um, and do predictions on new data that our neural network hasn't seen before. And over here on, on the overfitting, uh, we won't be able to do actual new predictions with data that it hasn't seen before. So how can we reduce overfitting if our neural network is overfitting uh, when training it? So first of all, we can start with trying to reduce the complexity of our neural network. So if we have a really, really complex neural network and we're not really doing a, co a complex task, then we can reduce some of the complexity by probably taking out some of the hidden layers, if we have too many hidden layers, and also trying to take out some of the neurons in, um, in some of the layers and see if that reduces overfitting when we're training a neural network again. We can also use something called regularization, which we're going to cover in, in another video because it's a really cool and nice feature. So we can play around with some of the different kind of like parameters and activations in the neural network reg with regularization. So it's a really cool and nice uh, uh, feature. So remember to uh, subscribe and hit the bell notification as well so you will get a notification when I upload uh, a video about regularization in this deep learning tutorial. We can also use something called dropout where we're just having, uh, we can have dropout layers or dropout neurons. So when we're, when we're training a neural network, we'll just drop out some of the neurons so we re reduce the complexity of our neural network. And we can also reduce the number of epochs, uh, so the number, uh, like the training duration, so we don't train for that long. As I showed you on the first graph uh, with the overview, then we can stop the training process when we hit the most optimal parameters before uh, our validation loss starts to increase again, because we want it to decrease and be uh, kind of the same as our loss, uh, or as our uh, training, training error. So this is a way to over reduce overfitting and it's, it's really nice and we're going to cover this more uh, in other videos but you can try out with reducing the complexity and using some of these methods here for regularization. So if you want to do this regularization here in Keras, um, there's uh, some built-in functions where you can just apply it. We're going to cover some L1 and L2 regularization and some other different kind of methods. But this is just like how if you want to do it in Keras uh, where you can import these regularizations, uh, regularizations uh, here from the uh, TensorFlow Keras. And then you can just specify in your layers like what uh, what uh, what type of uh, regularization you want to use um, in a layer in your neural network, and then it will do um, and then it will do all of it while training. And when you're training your neural network, then it will use this to like penal penalize um, the, either like the layers kernel or bias or the layers output. Um, as you can see up here, we have some different kind of. Um, regular rises uh, for a kernel and the buyers and the activi uh, activity so the layers output so if we have underfitting in our neural network when we're training it uh, we can reduce it some in some different kind of ways as well so first of all we can start with making our neural network uh, more complex because when we're over underfitting um, our, our model is not like generalizing in, and it's not really fitting that good to our data as we, as, we already, uh, as we already saw. So we can't do predictions of what we want on new data because um, we, our model is underfitting and it's not really uh, that complex. So we can start with adding, for example, layers or neural to our neural network and try to try, try that and see 
um, if we can reduce underfitting and we can actually do predictions on new data. Or we can either like in some of the cases, in some of the, a lot of the different kind of like cases, uh, we need to add more training data so the network can learn more about the specific task that we're going to do. And it both applies for ANNs and CNNs. So often when you're having CNNs, you will, you just want like if your if your application or like your neural network is underfitting and you can't predict the new data, then it's probably because you don't have enough images that your neural network can can learn on uh, learn off in the training process. So you can start with adding more data to it and try to make your model more complex to avoid this underfitting or at least reduce uh, the underfitting. We can also do some pre-processing of the data. So for example, we can remove the noise um, as an example, and we can get more like uh, we can get better and more precise data, and then we can use that data to make our model do more uh, complex things and avoid underfitting. And we can also increase the number of epochs. So we increase the training duration where in, in overfitting, we wanted to decrease the number of epochs, but if we're just training our neural networks uh, more and more and more, then we can also reduce uh, some of the underfitting. Um, as we saw on the overview slide, where you know, like we can see the model parameters, like they can still go down or if you just like train our, our model for, um, for more epochs. But if we don't have enough data and that's the cause of underfitting, then it won't really help to just increase the number of epochs if, if, the, if the, like the model that, that it's training on, like if it needs more data, then it doesn't really matter um, of the number of epochs or if your neural network is not complex enough. So make sure to start with trying out to make your neural network more complex and add more data, 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 training, training data. Um, and then afterwards, if that doesn't work yet, like you can try to increase the number of epochs or like pre-process some of the data that you feed to the neural network when it's training. And the last option here is that we can fine tune some of the parameters for the network and training process as the learning uh, with the learning rate and some of the other different kind of parameters that we can fine tune. Um, and we talked about those in um, in some of the previous videos. So check those out if you if you don't know like what different kind of parameters that you can tune in a neural network and in the training process of a neural network. So that's pretty much it for this video here, guys, where we know like what is underfitting and overfitting in our neural network when we're training on neural network, because these are some of the most like common, uh, common faults or like errors in our neural network when we have trained it. So we don't want our neural network to underfit or underfit uh, overfit. And we want to find some nice, some nice balance where we find the most optimal um, model parameters for our neural network. So we can both generalize uh, good on new data and we, we're still able to actually like predict a new data um, that, that we want to predict and we can also like it doesn't like just fit to the to the training data so we can't predict on new data that the model hasn't seen and trained on before so these are very nice and and very important uh, things in neural networks and when we're training a neural network and also like just how how neural networks work in in, in general um, so thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future because it just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. So I really appreciate the support and and if you're interested in one of the other tutorials I'm doing, I'm, I'm also currently doing a computer vision tutorial in C++ and OpenCV and an algorithm data structure tutorial in C++ as well. So if you're interested in one of those tutorials with computer vision and we're also talking about computer vision and deep learning together and how like they work together and how we can use that. So if you're interested in one of those tools, I'll link to one of them up here. Or else I'm just seeing you next video, guys. Bye for now.